This is Ethical Emma. Emma is a behavior analyst, which means that she holds BCBA or BCABA certification. And the little boy is Timmy. Timmy is the client, which means that he is the direct recipient of the behavior analyst's services. Emma is learning about ethics. As a behavior analyst, ethics will define specific rules of conduct for Emma. Ethics will describe behaviors, practices, and decisions that address the following fundamental questions. What is the right thing to do? What is worth doing? And what does it mean to be a good behavior analyst? So basically, the code of ethics will help Emma differentiate between behaviors that are appropriate versus behaviors that are inappropriate as a professional as well as a representative of the field of behavior analysis. Emma provides her client, Timmy, with behavioral services that are based solely on the principles and procedures of behavior analysis. And the behavioral services are designed to change Timmy's behavior in meaningful ways. Behavior analysts provide behavioral services that are not limited to assessment, behavior change interventions, training consultation, managing and supervising others, and delivering continuing education. Prior to providing Timmy with behavioral services, Emma received informed consent, which is the permission given by an individual with the legal right to consent before participating in services or research or allowing their information to be used or shared. The consent was given by a legally authorized representative, which is any individual authorized under law to provide consent on behalf of an individual who cannot provide consent to receive services or participate in research. Here comes another behavior analyst. She is Emma's colleague, know-it-all Nancy. Know-it-all Nancy started to tell Emma about all of her accolades. She shouted, don't forget that I'm a veteran behavior analyst. Therefore, everyone should know that I know it all. At that moment, this lady walked over and asked Emma, how's he doing? Know-it-all Nancy shouted, excuse me, but we don't know you. Emma asked Nancy, didn't you notice that delicious smell? It's okay for me to disclose information about Timmy's progress because that is Timmy's stakeholder. Emma explained that a stakeholder is an individual other than the client who was impacted by and invested in the behavior analyst's services. For example, a parent, caregiver, relative, legally authorized representative, collaborator, employer, agency, or institutional representatives, licensure board, funder, or third party contractor for services. Ethical Emma told know-it-all Nancy that although she is a veteran behavior analyst, there's always something new to learn. But know-it-all Nancy had a confused look on her face. She shouted, but I know it all. I know all about the ABCs, I know about FAs, I know about FBAs, I know it all. Emma started with number one. She mentioned to Nancy that they should benefit others. In other words, the well-being of the clients should always be priority. Behavior analysts should make decisions that will benefit their clients and stakeholders based solely on proven behavior analytic principles. All clients should be provided with services that are designed to change their behaviors in meaningful ways. Then Emma explained number two, which is to treat others with compassion, dignity, and respect. Nancy asked her colleague to elaborate and Emma stated that she always talks to her clients in a respectful manner and she includes her clients in as many conversations as possible. Emma also listens to her clients and their stakeholders concerns and she includes their input about decisions regarding the behavioral services. 
Emma stated that she would never talk about her clients as though they are not sitting right there. And she makes it a point to show the clients and their stakeholders that their opinions are valued. Finally, Emma explained to know-it-all Nancy that these are just a few examples, but there are many ways that they can show others compassion, dignity, and respect. Emma moved on to number three, which is to behave with integrity. She explained that integrity basically means that behavior analysts must be honest. For example, they keep their word and they consistently adhere to the principles of the code of ethics. Last but not least is number four. Behavior analysts should ensure their own competence by attending CEUs, which are continuing education training courses. Behavior analysts can also attend seminars and conferences so that their knowledge and skills will stay current with relevant and up-to-date information. As a result, the behavior analysts will be able to provide the best possible care to their clients. Emma finally ended by saying that behavior analysts should try to be the best ever. Know-it-all Nancy was speechless. And then ethical Emma poured her heart out in this song. Sing along until you get it. These are the four principles for the code of ethics. From one friend to another, it's time for us to benefit others. The next principle is direct. Let's treat others with compassion, dignity, and respect. Principle three states we must behave with integrity. The last principle makes sense. We must ensure our competence. Section one, ethics standards, responsibility as a professional. 1.01 from section one states that behavior analysts should create a truthful environment that does not involve fraudulent or illegal behavior. Dishonest Danny hired five new employees at his company called Awesome ABA. The new employees were ecstatic with the starting salary that Danny promised them. However, when they received their first check, they learned that it was not enough to even purchase a burger. Dishonest Danny wants to know if he is behaving in a truthful manner. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.02 states that behavior analysts must follow the law and the requirements of the professional community such as the BACB and licensure board. This behavior analyst is verifying with the BACB to make sure that his information is accurate. The behavior analyst is wondering if he is conforming with legal and professional requirements. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.03 states that behavior analysts must be accountable for their actions and professional services. This is behavior analyst Sal. Sal made arrangements to meet with his colleagues to review the updated code of ethics, but he was a no-show. When his coworkers asked him why he did not call to cancel or reschedule, silly Sal made silly faces and then he finally gave them a sarcastic apology. As a behavior analyst, it is extremely important to follow through on work commitments. It is also extremely important for behavior analysts to take responsibility for their mistakes. Sal is asking his colleagues if he is showing accountability. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.04 states that behavior analysts must define and document their professional role with relevant parties in writing before they provide services. This behavior analyst is explaining her professional role to the parents and she's answering their questions pertaining to the behavioral services that she will provide. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is practicing within a defined role. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.05 states that behavior analysts must practice within their identified scope of competence. They should engage in 
professional activities in new areas only after accessing and documenting appropriate study. Training, supervised experience, consultation, and or co-treatment for professionals competent in the new area. It is important for behavior analysts to refer or transition services to an appropriate professional if he or she did not receive the adequate training to perform activities in a new area. This is a behavior analyst who passed the big exam yesterday. He overheard a dog owner discussing a few challenges that the dog is having with different behaviors. The behavior analyst threw his scrubs on and started to advise the dog owner. The behavior analyst wants to know if he is practicing in his identified scope of competence. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.06 states that behavior analysts must maintain competence by actively engaging in professional development activities to maintain and further their professional competence. The two behavior analysts that you see here regularly read relevant literature, they attend conferences and conventions, they participate in workshops and other training opportunities, and they obtain additional coursework. They also receive coaching, consultation, supervision, and mentorship. Last but not least, they obtain and maintain appropriate professional credentials. The group is asking if they are working hard to maintain their competence. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.07 states that behavior analysts must actively engage in professional development activities to acquire knowledge and skills related to cultural responsiveness and diversity. In addition, they must evaluate their own biases and ability to address the needs of individuals with diverse needs and backgrounds. This is a group of behavior analysts who decided to promote diversity education by creating resource groups to their employees. Now they're asking if they are promoting cultural diversity. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. These two behavior analysts created an environment where they focus on equality, justice, and fairness. The behavior analysts are asking if they are following the code of ethics 1.08 that states that the environment should be equitable and inclusive. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.09 states that behavior analysts must not engage in behavior that is harassing or hostile toward others. The same two behavior analysts created a zero tolerance policy that draws a clear line that harassment will not be condoned. The behavior analysts, they're wondering if they are working towards creating an environment that is free of harassment. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.10 states that behavior analysts must maintain awareness of their personal biases and challenges. For example, mental or physical health conditions, legal, financial, marital slash relationship challenges should not interfere with the effectiveness of their professional work. This behavior analyst felt extremely stressed to the point that she, it began to interfere with her professional work. She decided to take the appropriate steps to resolve the issues that were interfering with her work so that her work was not compromised. She documented all actions taken as well as the outcomes. The behavior analyst wants to know if she took the appropriate steps to resolve her challenges. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.11 states that behavior analysts must not enter into or create multiple relationships, including professional, personal, and familial relationships with clients and colleagues, which may result in a conflict of interest that might harm one or more parties. A behavior analyst invited her client's newly divorced mother to a new 
Year's Eve party to cheer her up. She asked the DJ to turn the music down, so then she called a colleague to find out if she is following the ethical guidelines for 1.11 multiple relationships. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.12 states that behavior analysts must take precautions when giving and receiving gifts because the exchange of gifts can invite conflicts of interest and multiple relationships. Behavior analysts must not give gifts to or accept gifts from clients, stakeholders, supervisees, or trainees with a monetary value of more than $10, 10 US dollars. A behavior analyst explained to the stakeholders that this standard does not apply to her because she has expensive tastes and $10 is below her typical price range for a gift. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.13 states that behavior analysts must not abuse their power or authority by coercing or exploiting the individuals that they have power over. The behavior analyst convinced her supervisee to do some light cleaning in her apartment in exchange for the behavior analyst's signature on her final verification form. And now she is wondering if she is following the code of ethics for coercive and exploitative relationships. No, 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 you will have to go. 1.14 states that behavior analysts should not engage in romantic or sexual relationships with current clients, stakeholders, trainees, or supervisees, since it can end up posing a substantial risk of conflicts of interest and impaired judgment. Behavior analysts must not engage in romantic or sexual relationships with former clients or stakeholders for a minimum of two years from the date the professional relationship ended. Behavior analysts must not engage in romantic or sexual relationships with former supervisees or trainees until the parties can document that the professional relationship has ended. Behavior analysts must not accept as supervisees or trainees individuals with whom they have had a past romantic or sexual relationship until at least six months after the relationship has ended. This behavior analyst dated a former supervisee before the professional relationship ended. Before he ran off into the sunset, the behavior analyst stopped to ask himself, hmm, am I following the code of ethics for 1.14 romantic and sexual relationships? No, 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 you will have to go. 1.15 states that behavior analysts must respond to requests. This is a behavior analyst who makes appropriate efforts to respond to requests for information and she also complies with deadlines of relevant individuals, for example, such as clients, stakeholders, supervisees, trainees, and entities such as the BACB and the licensure board. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is doing the right thing. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. 1.16 states that behavior analysts should remain knowledgeable and they should comply with all self-reporting requirements of relevant entities. For example, the BACB, the licensure board. The behavior analyst is calling the BACB because she is self-reporting. She called to provide them with information about herself. And now she's asking if she is following the code of ethics for 1.16 self-reporting. Yes, 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 you're the best of the best. The next topic is about behavior analysts practicing responsibly. So now it's time to focus on C-O-N-S-E-N-T. Informed consent is an important concept that we must learn as ABA service providers. It is extremely important for behavior analysts to inform their clients about the services that will be provided, including the risk and benefits of the treatments. After the client receives the information, then they should be given the opportunity 
to decide if they are interested in initiating services or not. If a client is unable to provide consent, then assent to services will still be required, which is vocal or non-vocal verbal behavior that gives permission to participate in research or behavioral services by someone who is unable to provide informed consent as a result of their age or intellectual impairments. This is a new client. His name is Calvin. This client is scheduled to receive behavioral services at a company called Awesome ABA. Calvin, the client, is able to provide consent. However, he did not receive any information about the behavioral services that will be provided to him. Calvin, the client, is also wondering why he was not asked to sign any documents and he is extremely confused as to why the behavior analyst is on the phone in his office next door telling a friend confidential information about all of the new clients. When the behavior analyst asked Calvin if he was ready to start the session, Calvin, the client, responded by saying, C-O-N-S-E-N-T, you must obtain consent if you want to work with me. If you share my information, there will be a serious conversation. Sharing my medical info without consent will be wrong. That's why I added it to this song. But if everything is fine, then I'll sign on the dotted line. C-O-N-S-E-N-T, you must obtain consent before you work with me. After the song, the behavior analyst's colleague reminded all of the BCBAs that they must receive informed consent prior to working with the clients, as it is very, 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 very important. 2.01 states that behavior analysts must provide services that are based on scientific evidence. The services must also be conceptually consistent with behavioral principles. Behavior analyst Betty is providing her clients with evidence-based instruction that is conceptually consistent with behavioral principles. Betty is wondering if she is doing the right thing. I am impressed you are the best. 2.02 states that behavior analysts must deliver services in a timely manner. Punctual Peter is adamant about delivering his services before the deadline. He wants to know if he is following 2.02, which is related to timeliness. I am impressed you are the best. 2.03 states that behavior analysts must make sure that they protect the confidentiality of all of the individuals that they work with. It is Friday and careless Katie had a long day at work. She is on her way to meet up with her girls to celebrate, but she doesn't feel like taking the elevator upstairs to lock her client's files away. Katie decided to leave the files in her car and she is planning to return it on Monday morning. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is doing the right thing. No, 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 no. You must learn the ethics info. Social media Stanley just posted a picture of his client with the caption, my favorite client, Eddie, is doing excellent. Stanley is wondering if he is protecting his client's confidential information. No, 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 no. You must learn the ethics info. 2.05 states that behavior analysts should be knowledgeable about all requirements for storing, transporting, retaining, and destroying physical and electronic documentation related to their professional activities. This behavior analyst destroyed physical documentation after she made electronic copies. She is asking us if she did the right thing when it comes to documentation, protection, and retention. 
I am impressed you are the best. 2.06 states that behavior analysts must identify their services accurately and include all required information on reports, bills, invoices, requests for reimbursement, and receipts. When this behavior analyst discovered a mistake with the billing, he informed all relevant parties. He corrected the mistake in a timely manner, and he documented all actions that were taken in this circumstance, as well as the eventual outcomes. The behavior analyst is wondering if he is doing the right thing. I am impressed you are the best. 2.07 states that behavior analysts must not represent their fees. The behavior analyst on Ethical Eddie creates his fees based on the vehicles that his clients' parents drive. The behavior analyst is wondering if he is doing the right thing. No, 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 no. You must learn the ethics info. 2.08 states that behavior analysts must use understandable language and communicate effectively with all of the individuals that they work with. This behavior analyst explained all of the assessment and behavior change intervention procedures before she implemented them. She also explained the assessment and intervention results. Last but not least, she provided an accurate and current set of her credentials and a description of her area of competence. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is doing the right thing. I am impressed you are the best. 2.09 states that behavior analysts must involve clients and relevant stakeholders throughout the service relationship, including selecting goals, selecting and designing assessment and behavior change interventions, and also conducting continual progress monitoring. This client is providing the behavior analyst with several social skills goals that he would like to include in his plan. The behavior analyst asked his client to meet him at his office so that they can review the new goals before the goals are added to the behavior plan. Is the behavior analyst complying with 2.09 involving clients and stakeholders? I am impressed you are the best. Behavior analysts must address conflicts by compromising when possible. In addition, behavior analysts must always prioritize the best interests of their clients. Behavior analyst Combative Corey refuses to collaborate with the therapist from other professions, although they are also providing services to the client. When the therapist asks Combative Corey nicely to discuss the client's progress together, Combative Corey shouted, if it's not about ABA, then there is nothing left for you to say. Corey is wondering if he is following 2.10, collaborating with colleagues. No, 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 no. You must learn the ethics info. 2.11 states that behavior analysts must obtain informed consent before they assess their clients before they make major changes to interventions and when they exchange or release confidential information or records. This behavior analyst woke up with a few goals that she wanted to add to her client's treatment plan. She knew that it wouldn't even be an option until informed consent was given. So she received informed consent and then she made the changes to the treatment plan. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is following 2.11, obtaining informed consent. 2.12 states that behavior analysts must make sure that there are no medical needs before they implement behavioral services with their clients. It is extremely important 
to rule out the medical needs of clients before behavior analysts even think about implementing interventions. Behavior analyst pleading Patty is reminding her colleagues to ask the parents and stakeholders about the medical history of the clients. She said to her colleagues, please don't make me beg or plead, but it is very important for us to rule out our clients medical needs. All of the behavior analysts explained to pleading Patty that that is something that they take very seriously and they're definitely doing this every time. Pleading Patty was like, oh, okay. So even though she was dramatic, behavior analyst Pleading Patty is wondering if she is following 2.12 considering medical needs. 2.13 states that before a behavior analyst selects or designs behavior change interventions, they must use conceptually systematic assessments which are based on scientific evidence. The behavior analyst is planning to assess all of his students with a fun questionnaire that he found on the internet. This behavior analyst wants to know if he is doing the right thing. These behavior analysts selected, designed, and implemented behavior change interventions that are conceptually systematic. They are based on scientific evidence. They are based on assessment results. They focus on positive reinforcement procedures and best meet the needs of their clients and stakeholders. The behavior analyst that you see here would like to know if they are following, selecting, designing, and implementing assessments. 2.15 states that behavior analysts must select, design, and implement behavior change interventions with a focus on minimizing the risk of harm to their clients and stakeholders. This behavior analyst only considers restrictive or punishment-based procedures after trying less intrusive interventions. She has been using positive reinforcement with her client and the data indicates that it is extremely effective. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is following 2.15, minimizing risk of behavior change interventions. 2.16, describing behavior change interventions. Before implementation, this behavior analyst describes the objectives and procedures of all of the behavior change interventions in writing before she implements the treatment. She is asking herself, hmm, am I doing the right thing? 2.17 states that behavior analysts must make sure that they select and implement appropriate data collection procedures. In addition, the behavior analysts must display, summarize, and use the data to make decisions about the services. This behavior analyst flips a coin to decide which data collection procedure he will use with his clients. He is asking us if he is following 2.17, collecting and using data. 2.18 states that behavior analysts must continue to monitor and evaluate behavior change interventions for all of their clients. If there is no progress being made with a client, then the appropriate changes should be made to the treatment plan. In addition, if a behavior analyst has any concerns about the services that are being delivered at the same time by another professional, then the issue should be addressed in a professional manner. This behavior analyst has concerns about her client's progress with a different service provider. So she decided to address it with the individual in a professional manner. The behavior analyst is wondering if she is following 2.18 continual evaluation of the behavior change intervention. 2.19 states that behavior analysts must remove or minimize any conditions that affect the treatment plan. 
a behavior analyst noticed that her client was having a difficult time following one-step directions, which he clearly knows how to do. The behavior analyst respectfully asked the client's mother if she can reschedule her cleaning for a different time since the vacuum was preventing the client from hearing the therapist. The client has improved drastically and the behavior analyst is asking if she did the right thing. Section three, responsibility to clients and stakeholders. 3.01 states that behavior analysts must remain updated with information about laws and regulations related to mandated reporting requirements. In addition, behavior analysts must support their clients in every situation. This behavior analyst shouted, let me give you some advice that works like a charm. Benefit your clients and do no harm. He is wondering if he is doing the right thing when it comes to responsibility to clients. 3.02 states that behavior analysts must identify all stakeholders before they start the services. These two men are the behavior analysts on the case. They identified themselves as behavior analysts with the post-it notes on their foreheads with the letters BCBA written on them. They also identified their obligations to the two stakeholders that are sitting down. Are the behavior analysts following 3.02 identifying stakeholders? 3.03 states that behavior analysts must only accept clients who are within their scope of competence and available resources. In addition, a behavior analyst must have enough time to provide adequate supervision and staffing. The supervisees that you see standing around, they've been waiting for hours to speak with the behavior analyst who has canceled so many appointments with them that they lost count. The behavior analyst stated that it's not her fault because she clearly does not have time to provide adequate supervision and staffing. Is she following 3.03 accepting clients? 3.04 states that before implementing services, behavior analysts must ensure that there is a signed service agreement with the client or the relevant stakeholders that outlines the responsibilities of all parties. This behavior analyst is asking the clients to sign the service agreement and she also updates the service agreement as needed by relevant parties. Is she doing the right thing? 3.05 states that before beginning services, behavior analysts must document the financial agreement that was discussed with their clients, relevant stakeholders, or funders. This behavior analyst presented her client with a contract that everyone agreed on. The behavior analyst explained the financial agreement to the client. The client smiled and she signed the financial contract. And then the behavior analyst implemented the services. Is the behavior analyst following 3.05 financial agreements? 3.06 states that when it comes to consulting with other providers, behavior analysts must always act in the best interest of their clients. This behavior analyst is shouting to everyone around him. He's asking them to repeat after me, who is priority? And then everyone shouted back, your C-L-I-E-N-T. It seems excessive. However, this behavior analyst can't stop thinking about how important it is for his client's well-being to remain a priority. 3.07 states that when behavior analysts enter into a signed contract to provide services to a client, when a third party is involved, the behavior analyst must clarify the nature of the relationship with each party and assess any potential conflicts before services begin. This behavior analyst is explaining 
everything in detail to everyone involved just to make sure that they're all on the same page. Is he doing the right thing when it comes to 3.07? 3.08 states that behavior analysts must put their clients first. If a third party requests services from the behavior analysts that do not align with the well-being of the client, then the behavior analyst must resolve the conflicts in the best interest of the client. Unfortunately, the issue could not be resolved. So this behavior analyst stated that he will obtain additional training or consultation. He's also considering uh, discontinuing the service following appropriate transition measures. And there's also an option for him to refer the client to another behavior analyst. Is the behavior analyst following 3.08? Three point zero nine, when behavior analysts provide services at the request of a third party to a client that is a minor or an individual who does not have the legal right to make personal decisions, then the behavior analyst must make sure that either the client's parent or a legally authorized representative receives detailed information about the services. This behavior analyst explained detailed information to the stakeholder during a face-to-face -face meeting last week. He is following up with a phone call to make sure that there were no additional questions or concerns from the stakeholders about the third-party contracted services. Is the behavior analyst doing the right thing? 3.10 states that behavior analysts must inform their clients and stakeholders of all of the information about the limitations of confidentiality at the end of the professional relationship. It is the end of the professional relationship. However, this behavior analyst did not get a chance to inform the stakeholders about the limitations of confidentiality because he is too busy feeding his pet a puppy parfait. Is the behavior analyst following 3.10? 3.11 states that the behavior analyst must create and maintain high quality documentation of their professional activities throughout the service relationship to ensure accountability. This behavior analyst just informed her supervisee that it is not necessary to document professional activities if you have a great memory like she does. Is she following 3.11? 3.12 states that behavior analysts must advocate for and educate clients and stakeholders about evidence-based assessment and behavior change intervention procedures. This behavior analyst is educating clients about the evidence-based assessments that she is planning to assess the clients with. She wants to ensure that all clients meet their goals. Is she doing the right thing? 3.13 states that behavior analysts must make referrals based on the needs of their clients. These behavior analysts make referrals based on the relationship that they have with each other. Are they following 3.13? 3.14 states that behavior analysts must act in the best interest of the client to avoid interruption or disruption of services. Behavior analysts must make appropriate and timely efforts to continue behavioral services in the event of planned interruptions such as relocation, temporary leave of absence, etc. Behavior analysts must also make appropriate and timely efforts to continue behavioral services in the event of unplanned interruptions such as illness, funding disruption, parent request, emergencies. There was an interruption in services and this behavior analyst is telling all relevant parties the steps being taken to continue the services. She's also documenting all actions taken. 
is the behavior analyst following 3.14? Three point fifteen states that behavior analysts must appropriately discontinue services. In addition, it is extremely important to include in the service agreement the reason why the service will be discontinued. This is a behavior analyst who is always willing to assist her colleagues. She just received a call from another behavior analyst who is unsure about how to handle a situation regarding discontinuation of services. Behavior analyst Helpful Heather explained to her colleague that behavioral services may be discontinued when, number one, the client and or stakeholder requests discontinuation. She moved on to number two. Number two, when the client has met all behavior change goals, then it is time for the behavior analyst to roll. Number three, discontinue when there is harm towards you or a supervisee. Number four, when the client is not benefiting from the service anymore. Number five, when the stakeholders refuse to comply. And number six, when services are no longer funded. Finally, Helpful Heather stated that behavior analysts must provide a written plan stating the reason why the services will be discontinued. She also said to make sure to document acknowledgement of the plan before you continue. She went on to say that you must review the plan throughout the discharge process because it is a must. And then she ended by saying, all steps will be documented, I trust. Helpful Heather explained that 3.16 states that behavior analysts must add to the service agreement the reason why they are saying goodbye. The behavior analyst also stated that it is within their position to make sure that the client makes a smooth transition. Behavior analyst Helpful Heather went on to say that these are things that you must add. You see, number one are the transition activities. Number two states that the written plan must include target dates. Number three, please add the responsible parties. Heather said, wait, don't hang up. I only have one more. Review the plan throughout the transition, which is number four. The behavior analyst helpful Heather ended by stating that Behavior analysts must take appropriate steps to minimize disruptions to services during the transition. She said, wait, 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 one more thing. Collaborating with relevant service providers will be an amazing decision. Let's work together to be the best ever. Section 6, Responsibility in Research. 6.01 states that behavior analysts must follow all laws and regulations when they conduct research. This behavior analyst is thinking about all of the laws that he is planning to follow when he conducts his research. He stated that it may take a little bit of work. However, behavior analysts must follow all laws and regulations when they conduct research. Is the behavior analyst following 6.01? 6.02 states that behavior analysts must receive approval from a formal research review committee before they conduct research. Therefore, he is in the process of receiving approval from this formal research review committee. The behavior analyst stated that when it comes to conducting research, in order to continue, a review committee must approve. Is the behavior analyst following 6.02? 6.03 states that when behavior analysts conduct research in the context of service delivery, the research activities must be arranged in such a way that client services and client welfare are the priority. When these two behavior analysts were asked, so what's the priority? They both stated that the priority is a midday nap 
with the perfect neck pillow. Are they following 6.03? Six point zero four states that behavior analysts are responsible for receiving informed consent and assent from potential research participants prior to conducting research. This behavior analyst is receiving informed consent from the research participants. Is she doing the right thing? Six point zero five states that behavior analysts must prioritize the confidentiality of their research participants. This behavior analyst is making an effort to prevent accidental sharing of confidential or identifying information while conducting research. Is the behavior analyst following 6.05? 6.06 states that behavior analysts must only conduct research independently after they have successfully conducted research under a supervisor and the supervisor must have a defined relationship. Behavior analysts are responsible for the ethical conduct of everyone assigned to the research project. This behavior analyst just explained to the group of researchers, he said, let's behave ethically because at the end of the day, the responsibility will fall on me. Is the behavior analyst following 6.06? 6.07 states that when conducting research, behavior analysts must identify, disclose, and address conflicts of interest, for example, personal, financial, organization-related, service-related. This behavior analyst informed his colleagues that when conducting research, everything will be fine if all of the behavior analysts address conflicts of interest at all times. Is the behavior analyst following 6.07? The behavior analyst from section five learned that it is unethical to present portions or elements of another's work or data as your own. Therefore, the next time that he presented to his colleagues, he gave the appropriate credit to the authors of the materials that he presented. Is the behavior analyst finally doing the right thing? 6.09 states that behavior analysts must not present another's work or data as their own. Behavior analysts must only republish their previously published data or text when accompanied by proper disclosure. The same behavior analyst is still going strong. He is no longer taking credit for other people's work. He just gave appropriate credit to the research contributors during a different presentation. Is he still doing the right thing? 6.10 states that behavior analysts must comply with all applicable standards. For example, BACB rules, laws, research review committee requirements for storing, transporting, retaining, and destroying physical and electronic documentation that is related to research. This behavior analyst retains identifying documentation and data for the longest required duration. She also destroys physical documentation after she makes digital copies or summaries of data. For example, reports, graphs, etc. Is the behavior analyst doing the right thing? 6.11 states that behavior analysts must be honest about the results in their research, publications, and presentations. For example, they should not fabricate or falsify data. If an error is discovered, the behavior analyst must take steps to correct them. This behavior analyst is doing just that. Is he following 